Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 163. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is Jake Terrio. Hello. And joining him this week is Ian Gibson. Hello. Hi. Uh, sorry, I'm just a little astounded at how much we are paying for a domain. That is... Uh, that's like four times too much, Jake. We should look into that. Yeah, let's do let's do that. Wait, wait, Will, have you seen have you seen have you seen it yet, or, or should we play a guessing game here? Wait, this is good how for would stream. I have seen it? Why, why would Hold I? Hold on, I'm gonna go try to track down the it actual. Was, uh, this is on Twitter. It, it was posted in no. Discord. It's how much we pay for for our domains. If you had to pay for a .com domain per year, how much? How much? Would you pay? Do you think it costs, etc.? I I know, but will would you pay for one year? Five bucks, ten bucks. I pay. I think I pay twelve or fifteen for thinkgibson.com, and apparently we are paying thirty four dollars a year. (laughs) Yeah, we're getting fucking ripped here. We cannot do this for subpixelfilms.com. Uh, no. Actually, do we need those domains, Jake? Subpixeldocs.com so and subpixelproductions.com. So let's, let's table this <laughs> and come back to it. We're not, I mean, people know we own it. It's not like they're going to like. Do we really need Facebook.com? Yeah, no, I just don't know if this is a great uh, for the for the any of the, the viewing and listening audience. <laughs> All I'm saying is um, fuck GoDaddy because uh, I was not aware they were bending us over like that. So GoDaddy. I forget to until I get this. the renewal email. <laughs> yeah, my think it's an, so so Google domains actually if you remember they they shut down. So yeah, I was Google domains for a while and it was like 10, 12 bucks a year for thinkgibson.com. And then it rolled over to Squarespace recently because they sold Google domains to Squarespace, I believe. And I think I just paid 13 or 14 dollars for a year re- renewal. And GoDaddy is charging us apparently sixty-eight dollars for two years. It uh, it domain. renews tomorrow. I'm gonna turn off auto renew on subpixelproductions.com. <laughs> oh, so no one go out and snag that, please, because we really need it. <laughs> do, do we? Yeah, or do we hold our, on to it and we? Our uh, film department spins up our our production studio. Um, that's I mean, wild. Uh, um, <laughs> Subpixelproductions.com has advanced protection against unauthorized changes. To cancel your renewals, you'll need to verify your identity and confirm your downgrade to remove protection. Just take the time. We're paying sixty-eight dollars for it. Yes. I um I I I you know there's a brief moment there I forgot we were doing a podcast. I was like, are we in a meeting? Uh, What's going on here? Where's Kyle? Forgot I had to host this. Kyle's in the chat actually. (laughs) He guessed twenty (laughs) dollars. Um, this seemed like a good live react to realize we're getting fucked. Here. We're getting fucked live on air. Oh, I wish. What is this, OnlyFans? Jeez. Yeah, I know, I record them. <laughs> um, folks, I uh, wanted to talk about several things today. I'm going to... I don't think one of these is funny, so I'm not going to talk about it. But the other one I just remembered, I put this here so I would remember, <clears throat> is in my Chinese food this week. Mm. And if 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 you're if you're not... If you're woke, you're not going to like what I have to... No, I'm kidding. Uh, In my Chinese food this week, I got a fortune cookie generated by AI. And I don't know how I feel about that. How do you... Okay, I was going to ask you, how do you know that? But for the video viewers, you're holding a black fortune. Well, first that's not of all, a normal fortune. Yeah, first that's... of all, the backside of this fortune is black because it is an advertisement for Verizon. Uh, which is my first uh, red flag. <laughs> Second weird. red flag is underneath the lucky numbers, which looks like an IP address. Uh, it says Open Fortune, which I googled, <laughs> and turns out it is a AI uh, fortune telling company. Now, I, or not fortune, fortune cookie maker, whatever. I looked up Open Fortune, and I'm doing it right now again because they had some hilarious, incredible. Um, like testimonials, I don't know, like sayings now, about their company. Oh, before you continue, corporate branding on fortune cookies is like within the past couple of years, because I got some that were sp- sponsored by FTX, which I think is like a crypto company. What the fuck? That's the one that went bankrupt because it was 
uh, Sam Bankman Freed, the one mm -hmm. that was scamming a shitload of people. Well, he was putting his logo on the backside of fortune cookies. That's dumb. Maybe that's what did him in. That's um, dumb. Uh, where is it? It was it was basically like it was saying people find that the AI generated uh, fortune cookie is unique and gives them a different thing every time. And, like I went I'm not uh, I went to fortune cookies for ancient ancient wisdom, not what an AI's amalgamation of fortunes. So this is a this is this is the fortune for tonight's podcast. Uh, I don't even remember what it says, but if you can do something differently today, what would it be? Uh, it would be not doing this podcast. Good night, everybody. Um, no, I Got just, him. I, you know, I understand the want for unlimited fortunes, but I feel like I was cheated out of a fortune by it being AI I, generated. Well, so, okay, so let me make sure I'm understanding. Nostra Deimus. It's still printed on the fortune. Yeah. It's just telling you that it was AI generated by this other company. Yeah, so at the bottom of everything, it just has a logo and says Open Fortune. Okay. I mean, honestly, I I don't like the advertising, but what's the difference between an AI-generated fortune and the normal shitty generic I mean, fortune you get? I mean, I don't believe in any of this, but to me, someone who is reading... Not that there's people... I mean, there are people who do. People who, who read a fortune cookie are like, oh my god, the spirits know me. They figured it out. They know exactly what I need. Blah, 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 whatever. Uh, or they're at least doing that on some level in their brain. Versus when I open this up, I'm just like, oh, a computer wrote something on here and it has nothing. Like, well, I, like that's what I think oh. those people would think. Okay. Counter okay. You know what I mean? Machines can be magic, as we know from the, the hit Thomas Hanks film, Big. When yes. He gets turned big by a mechanical. Small. Uh, and then he gets small again. And he has sex with a 12 year old <laughs> in a grown man's body. It's, we don't want to get too far into the, the, the big lore. And he dances on a piano, um, even though he's 12. Mm. But I think I, I think I know what you're saying, Will, because before AI, all of these fortunes at some point had to be written by a person. Yeah. So it's the idea of no matter how stupid it is, it's the idea of somebody somewhere came up with what they think is a pearl of wisdom and they have delivered that to you. Yeah. Whereas by having it spit out by a machine, it loses whatever minute amount of mystery or mysticism that it previously had. Yeah, I feel like that's the same like if and again, I, I know nothing about it. But like, I feel like if someone found if someone who is into astrology or whatever found out those like printouts were AI generated and not like someone yeah. writing them, like I don't yeah. care because I don't believe in that stuff. But I can see that person getting upset over that. And I feel like the fortune cookie was like the like, oh, this isn't real or is it? Um, uh, sort of thing. Uh -huh. Like when you're a kid, I can see Listen, that. Yeah, I'm still a twelve year old. Help! I'm forced I, to dance I wish on the they piano. would. I wish they would lean into it more, though, because old school fortune cookies work because of that mysticism and a little bit of the racist Orientalism, which is like, give me pearls of Confucius, oh, Chinese yeah. people, you know, and I think that could work with AI generated. You just need to change the entire mythos around it and be like this sentient, all knowing machine has generated. Yeah. This 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 datum of the future for like we you. fed this machine the like, wisest yeah. wisest of all books. He has read Confucius yeah. and Buddha and the Bible, uh, and just be like all this like yeah. like list it all out and be like you got a, a this type of yeah yeah. And I, if I'm they could predict who's going to commit crimes, yes. And if they could yes. if they could guarantee that every single fortune was unique. Like literally unique. Yeah. There are not no two fortunes. I'd be like, okay, lean into it, and I'm okay with that. The problem is they're mixing the styles, and it doesn't quite work. Yeah, um, not to totally tangent, but Jake brought up Minority Report. It's not my fault. Why are there? <laughs> why is there one bad sandwich and one good sandwich in the fridge, and one bad container of milk and one good container of milk in the fridge? Because when he wakes up with the new eyes, it does that whole comedy bit where he eats the wrong sandwich and drinks the wrong milk. And I never understood why this person bought new milk and a new sandwich and didn't throw away the bad ones. 
Yeah, you've you Fidelity. never shared a fridge with Maggie because that's what she does. She buys too much food. It spoils. She forgets she has it. She goes and buys new food. And that will literally go for three or four cycles until I eventually go. We need to clean the fridge out because there's like four different groceries worth of vegetables here. And most of them are spoiled. And that is not an exaggeration. But it's the, That's what happens. But also, I will say they're the only things in the fridge. <laughs> Is, okay that's a little wonky that's a little wonky and i think there's an egg as well i don't remember it's just that scene i've never seen egg. that whole movie but that scene is burned into my eyes about him eating the wrong anyways um the other thing i want to talk about is um i can't and there's no there's no current on the market hdmi splitter switcher hdmi switcher that does 2.1 and 120 hertz are you I'm sure? Upset. Because I, I can't remember. I I had to buy a 4K so HDMI new, splitter and switcher for us. For that switcher life. we have, yeah, the K Kino or whatever it starts with a K. That's all I remember. Yeah, that. Yeah. So I have the 1080 version of that. The 4K version of that only does 60. It does not. Do yeah, I think that's what I think that's what it is. And I'm probably remembering 120 because of all the reviews saying this is trash. It doesn't handle 120, and I went. Who cares? I can't run that on my TV anyways. Well, see, I can, and I don't like not having my 120 now, so... But wait, wait, wait a minute. What do you have that supports 120? Just the PS5 and the... And the Xbox Series. Series X, right? Yeah. But you don't have you don't have two 120 ports on your TV? So, I do, but one of them is the ARC port that the... Uh, the soundbar um, goes sound through. Soundbars goes through, and I, that does not pass through 120. I as far as i could tell when i was testing it i i would i would check that because i could double check that we have the same family of soundbar and i'm pretty sure mine supports 120 because i Not plugged I the xbox it. into it and it freaked out so much that when i plugged the xbox back into the oled it wouldn't go to 120 so i had to like reboot the entire oh. xbox so well so that's the other problem is i would plug the ps5 into the soundbar because what i've discovered with our soundbar is if you try and run the Xbox through the soundbar, it, it like the hand sh the handshakes are fucked, so it will start to like strip things, and you have to alter mm -hmm. the settings. No, the handshaking on the Xbox is terrible. I will turn the Xbox on yeah. and turn the TV on, and fifty percent of the time it won't connect. And I have to unplug the HDMI and plug the HDMI back in. So now I have I always tune tune to the channel, the H the input, yeah. and then I turn the Xbox on because Microsoft you made a dirty port. And it doesn't handshake. Doesn't want to handshake with anybody. It's rude. It's this this rude. goes back to what what we were talking about. I don't think it was on local chat. It may have been on a different stream where you're diving down the CRT VHS hole, and you explained that VHS VHS tapes don't look that terrible. And we kind of talked about how it's because there were standards, mm. like there was not a huge variety of TVs. Uh, in terms of like displays, refresh rate, resolution, et cetera, and the same with VHS. Because there were standards the whole industry could make to that standard. And the problem with all this new fucking technology ever since we brought HD out on the market, et cetera, is that every time you bring out a new technology, it's a race to support it, but there's not enough standards in place. And so you get fucking handshake issues with everything. You know, like I'll give you an example my soundbar, right? My soundbar sports Dolby Atmos. My consoles support Dolby Atmos. My TV did not support Dolby Atmos when I bought it, but it got an over-the-air upgrade to support Dolby Atmos. So now I have Dolby Atmos on my TV. However, if I'm watching something and it's doing Dolby Atmos sound and I pause it, it will emit a high-pitched screech <laughs> while the video is paused. So like I'm watching something, I'm like, great, Dolby Atmos sounds great. And then I hit pause and it just goes, <laughs> So, so I've just gotten in the habit of it, I and, and there's there's plenty of streamers out there that will stream Dolby Atmos, even if the content is not necessarily Dolby Atmos. They'll just set it to Dolby Atmos for everything. And Dolby Atmos, unfortunately, is worth it. So I don't want to disable it because when it works and it's good, it's like, holy shit, this sounds amazing. So I've just gotten in the habit of, OK, uh, the, the tech's not working exactly. So I just have to pause and mute at the same time. Fucking VHS CRT error. You never had that problem. Right. Because everything was standardized. Let's just go back. Let's just go let's back go, to that. Listen, Can we go back to that. I watched upwards of four National Geographic specials this week. 
and I may have ordered 13 Arnold Schwarzenegger films off of uh, <laughs> eBay for $15. Um, but uh, yeah, I... I, I see um, Jewels of the Caribbean Sea over your shoulder. It's true. I put... And, uh, Jake, you want to know the best part? This, this is like... Like, it's like someone just took it out of the shrink wrap. It's oh, like man. nice. And it plays great. And it looks so good. And Keith David, I want him to lick my earlobes. Um, it's just <laughs> incredible. Uh, I watched another one narrated by him about poachers. And it was... Oh, the uh, wild, wild protectors? Wildlife or... warriors? Wildlife um, warriors. It's that so a good. good. Uh, it's not on Letterboxd. And it's not even on the movie database so i have to i have to add all the details in um and then i started watching the um arctic arctic kingdom uh which mm. is narrated by james coburn who it was in like a bunch of tv shows and he was in uh the great escape which is a fantastic mm -hmm. film um so yeah i've been really enjoying that my av carts all put together i put um I put a little like uh it took me forever to search this and i finally got to it by searching uh la like under desk laptop mounts like uh -huh. anything i was trying to search like hanging brackets all this sort of stuff and i couldn't find it and so i searched that and like going through those i just searched for a four inch one to fit the vcr and i found this av cart thing so basically i screwed it to the uh, shelf so the vhs player can hang uh and not take up an entire shelf so it looks great, and now my work desk is clear, so I can work on models again, uh, which is a nice. plus. Um, yeah, it's going great. I like the CRT world uh, in the VHS world, mostly because it's so gosh darn cheap. Uh, I like getting into cheap hobbies and then spending a ton of money on it. Uh, it's like not. It's like free. It's like not spending a lot of money. Um, anyway, so that's the chit chat section, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we had a wonderful time moving into the proper show here into the game section Ian Gibson I was playing this hello just Hi. before we had to uh, get on here uh, I lost maybe I lost maybe six runs in a row real quick uh, Ian yeah. Gibson tell me about Bellatro Bellatro continuing to play Bellatro the uh, video poker run based roguelike game um Continues to be a harsh mistress. Uh, I think I've won two or three runs now. My run percentage is probably like 5% as in like one out of 20 runs, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've, I've got on some bad streaks recently where. I'm starting to realize that it re you really have to lean into the early rounds and get some jokers that will grow with you. And, and what I mean by that is there are some jokers that are just like, Oh, plus four multiplier. And then there's some jokers that are like, oh, if you play a straight, it's a hundred chips extra. And those are cool. They'll get you through like half the game. But what you really want are the jokers that grow with you. Like my favorite one, I think is called the hitchhiker or the backpacker or something. Oh. And basically ev every time you play a hand or no, every time you play a card, that card gets plus four chips. Yep. So, so I had like, I had like a two and a two normally gets you two chips that by the end of the game was getting me two plus a hundred chips <laughs> every time I played it. And it was fantastic. So it's really early, like the early rounds where you're just like, okay, show me a good joker. I want to get a joker that grows and I want to get it early and I want to have a clear direction of where I'm going. And so it's always like, you know, you got to be flexible in the early rounds and it, you're kind of um, trying to get some good jokers, but I've had I've had some rounds. I've had some games where I will go like three or four games in a row and not make it past like the fourth round. Yeah, because I'm literally I'm literally just like, OK, give me what you got. I'm not getting good jokers. I'm not getting good jokers. And and, and at some point it's like I got to make 900 chips and all I'm getting is like two pairs and I don't have any multiplier jokers or whatever yet. And I'm just like fucking done three minutes in. Right. But yeah. at the same time, I keep I keep getting a much higher percentage of getting to round. I mean, uh, anti eight or anti nine, which is getting out of nine, which is getting closer to the end of the game. Um, so, yeah, it continues to be great. I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's really leaning into you always have this thing with games like this combo games like this card based games like this run based games like this, where you're like, 
I like the shotgun. And then you're like, oh, I want the shotgun. And every run, you either get the shotgun and you're like, I love the shotgun. Or you don't get the shotgun. And you're like, this game fucking sucks. God damn it. <laughs> but I know that's a weakness of mine. So I've been really leaning into what are you going to give me? You know, like, what are you going to what are you going to give me? And um, like, uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, four of a kind. But I had one run where early I got a Joker based off of four of a kind. And then I was able to get like seven aces. And I was like, this is my life now. And I went like seven aunties just trying to like get as many fucking aces as I could. And I ended up with like 10 aces and seven kings in the deck. I don't think I won that game, but it's one of those things where it's like, if you're going to if you're going to play the game and you're not going to hate yourself the whole time, you got to lean into whatever yeah. fucking weird strategy they give you. Uh, I don't know, Will, how you how you like in the game? Uh, I'm loving it. I, I agree with you. Like today is the first time I was like, okay, this Joker affects diamonds, and then uh, the other Joker's uh, is face cards, and then my other Joker's are adding to my hand size. So I'm just gonna go for flushes to get diamonds yep. and face cards. So like th that's where you're, like that's where I'm starting to go into it now. Like exactly what you're saying is lean into what the Jokers are being dealt to you. Don't like wait for the one Joker you really love. Uh, and then the other thing I was going to say is I'm like 95% of the time I'm skipping the first two blinds at the beginning of the game and going straight to the, yeah. uh, it depends the on the boss. It depends on what the tag. So yeah, it, depends, on it really gives, depends yeah. on the tag. If it's a tag I really don't want or isn't beneficial, I'll do the fight or the round, but I can consistently beat the first boss depending on their power because it's, it's about two flushes to get 600 yeah so you can get yeah. especially if you have the higher cards so you can get that quickly and pretty reliably so that's like my my current strategy is doing that uh we'll see how it works out for me since i've been losing so much lately but uh yeah i've just been enjoying like especially now with you doing the multiplier stuff it makes so much more sense for things now like the polychrome stuff makes way more sense to me so just like yeah. getting that ready and and like making sure i'm I'm keeping a card in my hand that can give me a times multiplier and like working within those bounds. Um, it's fun yeah. though. It's you really want, fun. You want another tip? This, this is, doesn't come, this doesn't fire as often as the Joker order, but you can also play your hand in any order that you want to. So mm -hmm. uh, for example, let's say you have a power that says, you know, Hey, face cards give you a plus four multiplier. Right. And you're looking at your hand and you have a seven, eight, nine, ten jack. You can or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's say that the Joker is first card you play gets double double the chips, right? And you're looking at your hand and you have a seven, eight, nine, ten jack. You can maneuver those cards around and have it so the jack is all the way on the left and it goes jack seven, eight, nine, ten. It still counts as a straight when you play it, but now the jack is the first card. Gotcha. So you also gotta you gotta think about how you're arranging the cards in your hand. It will still count as that type of hand, but you can rearrange them all out of order just to get them to hit properly. Um yeah, it's a fantastic game. It's a lot of fun. Very, very fun. What else have you been is playing? Is it on the possible goatee list? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thousand percent. I think okay. you know we should check that because I put put Hell Divers on there between a stream one time because I was like I think we're all in for that. Uh, and then, I don't mean to um to cut this off, but I was going to mention it. I feel like every three months or every four months we should do a goatee check in, have the four of us on here, and we say how are we feeling so far. Let's go through the list and talk through it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think maybe maybe in a month's time, early April. We Once can have time? our first goatee check in. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Um, but yes, ba 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 Balatro is up there. Ian put it there. For sure. Um, For sure. Uh, I so sorry, something was on the tip of my. Oh, uh, I just did, since it's not going to be in the news section, I just find it funny the whole gambling uh, stuff with Balatro, which like it makes sense. I get someone's surface level thing yeah. that, but their backstory uh, for those people don't know, it was taken down from several storefronts because people thought it was promoting gambling because of an age restriction got added to it. Um, so they had beaten the the ruling before the game came out, and then the game came out and got huge, and then the ruling someone switched the ruling back, and now they're undoing it again, which is just like goes to show you 
like suddenly someone is just like oh you shouldn't be making this much money or you shouldn't be doing this and uh, it's just like yeah it's frustrating that happened so. last year i believe to a, a sunshine shuffle a strange scaffold game that had poker yep. in it oh got, really like taken off a couple of storefronts i think it's back up everywhere but I can and it's wrong. weird too because when someone said that i was like oh yeah i mean i can i guess like betting but you're not betting chips that's where it like fell apart in my head i yeah, was like yeah, there's yeah. chips and there's poker but there's no betting and i was like i was like if oh, you go yeah. to a casino trying to do <laughs> bellatro <laughs> yeah you're gonna make me go poorly god i would i would fucking spend so much money at a casino if they just had a bellatro table <laughs> oh my god <laughs> man great. we could revolutionize um, the casino industry by just making their yeah. games better <laughs> Yeah, it would be honestly, it's hard for me to be upset about this news because there is enough surface level in that game for me to be like, yeah, you should err on the side of this is gambling and make them prove that it's not. And that is a good restriction to have for any gaming platform is we're not going to allow games with, a, you know, a children's label that promote gambling. You have to be uh, a mature adult, adults only, whatever you decide the minimum rating is. And it's like, yeah, it sucks for Bellatro, but at the same time, it looks like a fucking gambling game. Oh, so yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I hate that they have to go through the red tape and the bureaucracy of it. But yeah, I do want them to prove that they're not a gambling game and they deserve the lower level. Because for every Bellatro, there's a hundred fucking games that don't look like a gambling game. But surprise, surprise, it's a fucking gambling game for kids. You know? <laughs> yeah. Nightmare out there. Uh, do you get you, you guys want to hear about the other game I've been playing? Not really. Tell me. <laughs> it was this was a wish you do. I desperately want to hear about it. Um, this was not. Was this a wish list spotlight? Yes. Wow, I don't know that it deserved it. I'm probably the one that put it on there. <laughs> you were. Uh, oh, <laughs> it was in a. We talked about it in a direct. Um, yeah, either like a direct or a PlayStation showcase, or maybe or just Summer Games um, Fest. Or a Game Awards. Game Awards. E3. Achilles. It was a, it was a 2007 E3 it's Capcom actually showcase. Actually, 1996. <laughs> you press the XXX, the YYY. It's a sequel to 2048. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, folks, if you haven't guessed it, I'm talking about Expeditions, a Mudrunner game. <laughs> I just realized I hadn't said the name of the game yet, so people were just like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> what viewers? Um, uh yeah, so Expedition's Mudrunner game is a sequel to Snow Runner, which is a sequel to Mud Runner, which is a sequel to Spin Tires or a re relaunch of Spin Tires. Which is, is a right? sequel to driving. Is it really? In general. No. Is a to <laughs> in general. <laughs> but anyways, um I'm gonna steal a uh a, a, some words from Jake Decker from GameSpot who said this is a puzzle game. This is a puzzle driving game. And I'm like, yeah, you would, that, that's, you would that's fuck me up if it. I said that. <laughs> and not every game's no, a I puzzle wouldn't. game. <laughs> it I, I'm a not saying game. every game is a puzzle game, but but here's the thing about the series. And this is kind of the third one in the series is that you are basically given a vehicle in a very harsh terrain. And then you're given an objective, which usually requires you going to a location, doing something at that location sometimes retrieving a vehicle, et cetera, and then coming back. And it really is a puzzle game because they have modeled the vehicle physical interactions with the ground so well that you are constantly trying to puzzle out, okay, how do I get a hundred yards from here to the little circle they want me to get to when there's like a pit of mud here and there's a swamp and there's rocks there that are dry, but they're also like 14 inches tall, right? So you're constantly puzzling out, like how do I move through this fucking terrain? And then you end up in situations where you're like, I'm at like a 40 degree angle tilted <laughs> left on these rocks because I kind of slid too much climbing up them. How do I get out of this without tipping over? Um, and it's it's very fun. Um, it, Will, you have some experience with with Mudrunner and Snowrunner, right? Yeah. Um, I. I'm a little disappointed with this game. Let me tell you why. The core gameplay that I just described, it's there. Will, did you ever feel like in Mudrunner or Snowrunner, first of all, that the UI UX menu experience was 
not that great. Um, yeah, yeah, it was kind of rough in a lot yeah. of areas. I think they made it worse in this game. <laughs> it's the menus are even more confusing in a way. Um, and it, it, Will, did you ever feel like your sense of like progress, like what you're supposed to do next and what you're working towards or earning felt a little bit confusing or muddled? Uh, yeah, because I don't think Mudrunner had any of that. So I just think Snowrunner yeah. was Snowrunner, Snowrunner was weird because you like went to the it. different places. So you didn't quite yeah. always know which map you were supposed to be working on. That was the yeah. only thing, but it had some progression. Yeah, and you could you would do this like I remember there was a fucking swamp field with a with a like a truck stuck in the middle of it, and I was like, I want that fucking truck. Learnia but, of the lake. <laughs> yeah, I I literally I kept it's right next to your home Dragon base. So you keep driving there. by it, but you can't get to it because if you try and get to it, your current vehicle and your current tech you're just going to get fucking stuck. So I remember one of the best moments in the game was when I had eked out just enough upgrades for a vehicle I had unlocked to be able to like literally spend 40 minutes tiptoeing through this like swampy, muddy fucking farm field and like just barely winching onto the truck and then just barely winching onto this like fence post and spending another 30 minutes like wrenching it out of the mud and maneuvering it and getting it back and being like, I got the fucking truck I keep driving by. Right. And so SnowRunner kind of had that progression almost. Uh, I, I'm just going to say it almost like in an Elden Ring type way or any type of good open world game where it's like you're constantly going by things and seeing them and you're like, I can't get there. I'm not ready for that yet. And then one day you're like, I'm fucking ready. You know, um, Expeditions and Mudrunner game has what appears to be none of that. Like there's a tutorial map and it has five missions in it and they just have you go all these different places and will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the previous games, it was kind of a persistent world in a way. So like if you you're in one truck, you go drive out. Oh, shit, you ran out of fuel. You flipped it. It got stuck somewhere. Yeah, you could fast travel back to the base. Get a new vehicle, go to that truck and pull it out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it worked. They're not really doing that this way. There's expeditions. So the way it works is like you say, hey, I want to go do this mission. And you pick the vehicles you want to take with you and you can take one or you can take three or four or whatever. And then you spawn in the map and then you start doing the expedition. And I guess if you wanted to or you got stuck, you could switch back and grab another vehicle. But at the end of it, when you complete it or when you give up on it, you just go, OK, I'm done with the expedition. And then you go back to the main menu with all your shit. So there's no persistence. Oh, there's wow. no sense of like there's no sense of like I fucked up one time and my Jeep is upside down at the bottom of this ravine and I can't fucking get it back. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I think in the old games, you could kind of get it back if you like paid a shitload of money. Yeah. But if you didn't want to pay money, you had to go recover your own vehicle. And that's just not here because at the end of every expedition or mission, you end up just saying like, OK, I either give up or, I'm, or I've completed it and everything just comes back to you. So it's. It's honestly disappointing. And here's the problem, right? If you have never played one of these games and you want to play one of these games, don't buy this. Go buy probably SnowRunner or MudRunner. It's the same fucking game, the same experience. I think those ones do it slightly better. And it's OK for you to buy the old game because it's not like you're missing a lot with Expeditions, the brand new game, right? If you liked these games, I'm not sure you should buy Expeditions of Mudrunner game because it's not doing enough new. And in many ways, it's a step backwards for the series. So this game is really only for people that don't know what they're getting into. They don't know that it's not good, which is me because I bought it pre-ordered. Nice. Or people that are fucking sickos and they get hard playing this game and they're like, I need more. I finished all of SnowRunner. I finished all of Mudrunner. And then it's like, cool, this is more of that in a way and there are different trains and different trucks but at the end of the day it's hard for me to sit down and go yeah i want to play this or recommend this to anybody when it's just like no go play snow runner go play mud runner they have the same flaws but then other parts are better done and it's just very disappointing it sucks hey, is the is there like good multiplayer can you tell there's, there's no multiplayer at launch 
There's no multiplayer. Okay, thank God. My, because my yeah. brothers and I play SnowRunner and, and MudRunner. Not Mud MudRunner was not good, but um, we play a lot of SnowRunner. Um, and uh, I wanted to play this with them, so I'm glad it. I'm glad you told me that because I was thinking about getting I mean, it. But I might just wait. Does SnowRunner have crossplay? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That is a Google question. Okay. Yeah. Because my brother bought it for me for my birthday, and I've yet to play it. But <gasps> I would on play PlayStation. That it's good. Yeah. It's good. I mean, I was planning on streaming Mud Runner this weekend, but maybe we should just play Snow Runner. Um, play some Snow Runner. You know what? If let me if, Google. Let me Google. Jake, uh, well, I, let me check my sources because if I should get, I could get Jake a PC copy of Snow Runner. Ooh. What I am saying. It's yes, Snow Runner supports crossplay. Oh, okay. I'm okay, not getting perfect. a PC copy. <laughs> but I could if I wanted. Yeah, it's, to. it's the problem is that, that core experience is still very, very unique, and it still feels very good. It's literally just everything. I, I don't want to say everything. It's just there's too much around it getting in and out of the game, getting in and out of the menus, some sense of persistence, some sense of like progression that they're fumbling on. So so I'm still playing this game. I'm enjoying it. I played like probably 10 hours of Snow Runner. That core is so fucking good. They're just fumbling on everything around it, which is a shame because it's a very unique game. Yeah, that sucks. I'm glad I'm glad I didn't buy it, though. Um, I, I really didn't actually really actually didn't buy it uh, because there's too many bangers coming out. And I was like, I'm not going to have enough time to get to this game. So I'm going to push it uh, to the end of the year. And so I'm glad I did that. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of disappointing. Uh, moving on, Jake, tell me about the games that you have been playing. Good sir, please. Mm, yes. So the, the big one, of course, is Helldivers 2. That game owns. And yep. um, I've not yet played the... I think what what we're seeing is... As the weeks since launch have gone on, barring the kind of disastrous set date of the servers right at the beginning, them not realizing how uh, well received this game was going to be and how many people were going to want to play it. I think that we're seeing uh, kind of the first time in a long while of a live service model game done very, very well. Um, where like they were teasing out the new stratagems and whatnot and then today they were like all right we're rolling out the we're rolling out the the mobile suits and then suddenly they were like oh no that planet's under attack no mobile suits until we liberate it and it creates this like yeah authentic kind of moment in the community where people are like we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go do the Answer thing the call. and then we get stuff for it to play in the yeah. game part um, of me yeah. wishes they the true story is they needed to delay it, so they just came up with this <laughs> so they could delay it and like know, finish tweaking ready. it. <laughs> well, did you? I don't know if you guys saw. I just saw it on on Twitter. On that planet in the map, there's a chance that you find a mech that you can get into. <gasps> Amazing! Oh. I love it. Yeah, um, yeah that, it it looks so good. It feels so good. It sounds so good. It's just crazy that that it's so fun to play um yeah very good love held over I, I do think i i think the weird thing though is i'm not actually disagreeing with you jake mm -hmm. i don't think it's crazy like they're not doing anything the only things they're doing that are crazy oh is no like, i don't mean to say that it's some fantastic yeah, anomaly yeah. it's no, just no, but what i mean is like delightful. like much of their success is just doing game design well, right? Yeah. They're not they're not introducing brand new mechanics or anything. It's just they're doing the basics so well. And it's one of those things where I look to the rest of the industry and I say, hey, hey, fuckos, <laughs> look at what they're doing, right? They're not doing anything special. Anything they've got like huge fucking obstacles and roadblocks and an obsolete engine mm -hmm. fighting against them. And yet somehow they're making the, the correct design decisions when you fucking idiots keep making the wrong ones, you know? And it's like, that's what I love about this game is they're not doing anything crazy. They're just doing the normal stuff really fucking well, it's you know? Good, good, clean game design. Yep, exactly. Um, yeah, because there's in very, 15 very servers good. to verify when you enter the game, like tracking you and and your yeah. your <laughs> your microtransactions and everything. They can actually do it's fun so stuff. Can't get enough of it. Um, 
then I've been playing, I've been, or I've been going back into uh, Lego 2K Drive in preparation for the big, um, I'm going to do, we're going to do, I'm going to do a big review of it in May um, because that's going to be the one year anniversary. I didn't want to do, Oh, I mean, back last May, I thought, oh, maybe I'll be able to review it within a short time frame. But then I was like, well, do I want to wait for like, to see what the seasonal content is just to get a more like kind of holistic feel of it. Um, and so it's going to be on the one year anniversary. That's when we're going to review it. So I've been replaying it. Um, I've encountered a bizarre issue where in the story mode, when I'm in the story mode, the game plays great. All the races play fine. I don't get any, like it's always, you know, 60 FPS at any moment. But if I go to individual races from like the main menu, just pick the races, I encounter all sorts of like dropped frames and like slow, it, like it's just not as responsive. It's very weird. That's it's weird. a bizarre issue. Um, so I'm like, well, I guess I'm not going to, I'm, I thought to myself, I'm like, Oh, an easy way to capture footage of all the races is just to go through the queue of the races, but I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I have to go track them all down <laughs> in the open world. Then they play fine. Um, very weird. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, and I did not end up buying any of the season passes because I just didn't want to do that. It seemed yeah, like I didn't. I, I, didn't, this I don't is, want that. This is one of those games I was excited to tr buy or at least try at some point. But seeing your reaction to it and kind of the general reaction to it, I'm. It feels like a. It feels like a pretty big miss. If it comes to Game Pass, snatch it up. I think. But it, other than I, that. Maybe it was PlayStation Plus that it was on. It hit oh, one maybe. of them. I don't know. Sounds but, um, like yeah, it's the the too long don't read of the review will be. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Speaking of PlayStation Plus, can I can I give a can I give a secret little aside real quick? Uh oh, no. OK, so PlayStation Plus. Will, do you remember the trick that we pulled with PlayStation Plus when it was uh, announced? your family plan yeah where we we just up we bought into the upgrades of, oh no we bought what it was gonna convert from yes we bought playstation now at a certain price per year and they grandfathered you in and the new price was much higher um so i got the renewal email recently and um sorry i'm trying to look up some prices here to give you some information and essentially, I'm still at the price, right? And PlayStation Plus, I'm getting PlayStation Plus Premium. I apologize. Websites aren't fucking. Okay, PlayStation Plus Premium costs $160 a year if you do the 12-month subscription. Yeah. That's like the top tier gets you everything, etc. My grandfathered price which is still renewing is $80 a year. <laughs> Ooh. It's half off. And Ooh. I thought for sure they would have fucking caught this by now, but I am now on my, I'm, this is going to be my third year at this price. <laughs> how, and it's wild. How are you getting away with it? And I'm not. Did you, uh, what's, what's your upcoming payment? Well, so my last payment was one, t I paid 119 in April of last year. I wonder if you switched your subscription or something, because mine it might have, I might have canceled April. it and then brought it back up. Yeah. So mine is subscription PlayStation Plus Premium payment plan every 12 months. Next payment due $80. <laughs> Crazy. It's Damn. fucking wild. Um, that being said, I've used it like three times, but I'll, I'll pay $80 <laughs> a year for that. That's OK. That's what, $750 a month or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still use it. Not at all, but I still pay for it because I'm a monster. I'm an absolute yeah. monster. Um, yeah. Uh, Jake, did you want to talk about Pirate Hunter? Yeah. Oh, well, I was going to lead into it with the... Oh, oh I apologize. Hey, I'm playing you wanna, wait, let's go back. Jake, what other Jake, I can't Jake, make the joke. Jake, what other games are you playing? Jake, what other games are you playing? Uh, you know, the new pirate game that everybody's talking about, which is 2003's Pirate Hunter Seize and Destroy. Um... Yeah, I finally got this up and running on the beautiful PC that y'all gifted me. Um, a great game from my childhood. Um, and uh, it's just, it's delightful. 
it's good clean fun um it's i i kind of had forgotten a lot of the uh minutia of it i just kind of remembered like the sea battles but there's Mm -hmm. a ton of stuff under the hood like the you can if you wanted to well no that's not true there are certain mission objectives for like annexing towns that i guess you could only do with ships with a lot of cannons but if Uh you wanted to for a lot of that time you could just do a trading thing like every time you meet another boat at sea your options are um attack greet or sail on and if you greet sometimes the captain will be they'll like give you a bit of news about the world and it might be like oh a famous pirate was spotted near this town or this town is there's a drought so they've run out of such and such uh uh goods and supplies and so then you can be like oh let me go buy a bunch from i know this place has a bunch of that goods and supply i can go sell it to those people for a lot of money because they really need it price gouging Um, yeah and there's like uh, every once in a while you might encounter like a sunken ship that has treasure in it um you can there's you can get like missions from the governors of certain the like certain capital towns of the french or spanish or dutch or english they all control you know various parts of the caribbean at the time in which the game is set and you can get missions from the governors and if you get like enough loyalty points with certain nation states at some point the governors will be like would you like my daughter's hand in marriage and that can open up like other quest paths i'd like the whole body but (laughs) (laughs) it's very good um and um yeah very fun so i'm enjoying diving back in great i really want to play i also i know it's not this way but it really should be seize and destroy s-e-a-s like seize Mm. well that's the the north american title is pirate hunter seize and destroy the 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 european title is i think tortuga pirates of the new world and what's the japanese title i don't know if it ever really skull and bones Skull and Bones. <laughs> That's the Singapore. That's the Singapore. Black Flag. Yeah, you Singapore. know, I thought about replaying Black Flag recently. I saw myself in the mirror. I went, what if I replayed Assassin's Creed Black Flag? You should just play. I've always wanted to play Sid Meier's Pirates because I've always heard very good things about that. I was playing more. I booted up Sea Dogs again a while ago, which is a game I played as a kid inscrutable it can't run at all on my computer but then Hmm. i found out that sea dogs was super popular in russia and they made a bunch of like sequels to it like the russians did not the sea dogs people uh and there's a new one coming out that was in the steam next fest sale and it it played exactly like sea dogs but it looked like a game from 2008 uh the uh, copy of roller coaster tycoon 3 that i have the back of the game manual has an advertisement for Sid Meier's, Sid Meier's Pirates. Pirates. I own it on GOG, I think. And I think I actually have it physically as well. Um, yeah, we should, I should play Sid Meier's Pirates. Yeah, this Sid... that would have come out the year after Pirate Hunter. Wild. Um, I have been playing video games this week. I have dove in. I have dove in. I have dove I have jumped into the waters, the cool, crisp waters of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Folks, uh, oh. rebirth or remake? Can we, okay, yeah, 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 pause. We talked about this last week, but I Action. need, I, we need to wish, we need to be sure. What is your plan to play these games? My plan, should I choose to accept it? So I have played, um, 15 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours of the original. Final yes. Fantasy 7, which covers from the beginning of the game until you do the cool motorcycle shit and leave Midgar. And then I walk to a Chocobo farm. Final Fantasy 7 Remake covers beginning of the game to when you leave Midgar, I believe. I don't think you get to actually go to the ranch I went to. I think it ends with the motorcycle stuff. I'm not 100% sure. I just think that's what it is. So, uh... I have played that of the original game and now I am playing the remake and I'm going to complete the remake and then I'm going to go play the amount in the original game that Rebirth covers 
then I'll go eventually play yeah. Rebirth. Um, yeah. I don't even know how far Rebirth goes. So anyways, I am I, playing... I was about to say, you're going to have to possibly spoil yourself to know where Rebirth yeah. ends. Well, the New York Times already spoiled something for me, so uh, not much else I can do about it. <laughs> um, it did they uh, spoil that democracy dies in darkness? Yes, and to thunderous applause. Um... So I uh, I am playing uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, folks. This game, uh, you know, you know, you know, this game, Take your time. solid seven. No idea what people are so crazy about. It's a good game. It's fun. I love playing it, but it ain't. I you know I wouldn't pick it out of a lineup. Um, yeah, well, where where are you at? Because I'm curious if if w where I stopped is right around where you are. So I'm about 15 hours in. Uh, What's I'm... going on, like story wise ish slash? What have you done? So uh, what have you done? <laughs> what have you done? Uh, I'm about to pop 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 into uh, Don Corneo's house. Aerith is in a dress, and she's looking stunning. And unfortunately. I'm not dressing up as a woman like I did in the original game, uh, and I find that offensive. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I I probably stopped a couple hours before that. I think, I don't know that I would go down to a solid seven, because I think that implies that they're, this is not, I'm not holding you to this, but for me, a seven means like some good, some bad, whereas I think this is more like some great, some good. Yeah, seven's harsh. I just kind of wanted the reactions. I'd probably give it an eight, to be honest with you, maybe a 8.5. Um, yeah, it's just like I've there's so much nostalgia carrying this game, and as someone who just yeah. played seven, like I almost and this is an exaggeration, I don't actually mean this, but I almost prefer the original to this game. Can, can uh, you see? Can you see what I was saying? Where I was like, I said this last week, I've said it a couple times, which is that I want them to do the middle, I want them to take the original Final Fantasy VII content and everything not add anything to it but but do it in yeah. 3d etc because i think this is adding a lot of stuff but sometimes it feels like kingdom hearts where you're just running down like an empty road for 30 minutes and there's just groups of enemies that keep popping out at you and it's like the combat doesn't feel terrible but at the same time this feels like a waste of time you know yeah it's it's interesting and 15 hours in i was still learning things about the combat like I finally just learned I can I can make my other characters do abilities without switching to them, which I never realized for a while. Mm -hmm. Um it, it's fairly I don't the combat the combat's cool. Like I like it. It feels good. It's it's integrated turn base really well. Um yeah. I find it frustrating to like play though. I I I feel like I'm never yeah. Like, guarding never works for me. Dodging attacks never works for me. Like, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong with those. But I, I like, as someone who just came hot off the presses of Ninja Gaiden, where that stuff all works fantastically, not that that's quite the same, I just, like, I'm just running around the map away from the enemies, and they're still hitting me. Like, there's some attacks that they're doing that I'm like, am I supposed to guard this? I've tried it a couple times. Like, uh, and also, I find the the, like materia stuff and all of that kind of odd like i feel like they need you to have leftover knowledge from the first game or from the original game that i don't have which uh -huh. is like exactly how materia works like i don't know why i have so many copies of materia why like how leveling them up works like is there any sort of pattern to putting these on people yeah like why do i have to get into a fight realize i need a materia and i can't equip it at all uh during a fight like just yeah it's just frustrating that feels like that almost feels like you know how like first person shooter they're not going to teach you first person shooters aren't necessarily going to teach you how to move and shoot yeah except exactly. for like maybe in tutorial i feel like i feel like you're hitting the same thing but with slash jrpgs slash final fantasy games where they're just expecting you to have this knowledge about final fantasy games and jrpg but they're not explicitly giving it to you and that can definitely be frustrating yeah. um i i think I, i'm i'm kind of glad you have this opinion because for me i i didn't hate the game but the game wasn't clicking for me and 
I could see that I was well made and there was a lot of praise for it. I was like, maybe it's just not for me. But the more I think about it, it's like like the first time you get to the the undercity, the the village that your farmer whatever, and they just hand you don't they give you like four fetch quests in a row and you're just running yeah. around trying to find things and fetch it? Every area it just feels does like, that and it's yeah. they're like they're like twists on some of the quests from the original game, which I like. But also it's just like if you're gonna remake the game, like change up the quests like i don't really want to do these again yeah and the quests are a little bit different you're not dressing it you're doing the same quests, but it's not with the connotation of dressing uh cloud up to be a pretty girl uh yeah. which i was honestly looking f forward to them doing in 2020 yep. like it would have been funny to see um but yeah i i agree with you i'm i'm you know i feel about it the same way i felt about finishing far cry 5 which is just like you know, I'm having enough fun that I'm going to keep playing this game. Like with one. That's the America that's... one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I'm going to have enough fun playing this game if I'm still playing it by the time Dragon's Dogma comes out. Sorry, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, maybe if I'm still playing it by the time uh, Battlefront comes out next Thursday. Sorry, <laughs> Final Fantasy <laughs> Uh, seven yeah. but um i am enjoying like I, I think i would come back to it for sure um i took a bunch of notes uh which i'm not going to read all of these because there's a shit ton of them but um i did point out that npcs talk way too much you're walking through a village and they're all talking and it's all subtitling all the time uh the npc animations uh, they so they do like the big cutscenes. And then all of the other stuff that isn't a like a well produced cutscene is the y Yakuza um, character models standing there talking with the occasional kind of baked in animation, and it's yeah. always Tifa and Aerith doing the like, uh huh, like the like Pixar oh, really? come forward like oh. woo woo thing, and I want to die every single time. I don't. It just like happens and. This leads me to, to my next point, which is, is Aerith a stupid person or is she dumb? Like, is she, yeah, is she like a She's 12 like, year old in the body of a 25 year old? She is J probably Jake, the... you, may, you may know this, like, like, you know, there's like manic pixie dream girl is a cliche. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't there one for it's just like, it's just like vapid, vapid teenage housewife. You know what I mean? Like, if, that's I'm what sure she is. there is. I don't know of a specific term for she, that type of character but she is so and i don't mean this in a mean way because I, I love her she's great she is so dumb and <laughs> and so is cloud yeah. and it it didn't come across this way in text in the original game but they're just like she like during this whole section she keeps trying to do double high fives with you and she's like she does this and he goes Ugh. and she's like ah, ah. And it's just like are you <laughs> What is that? I just want to be the guy standing there at the party with a drink being like, are you guys OK? Like, do you know That's each other? Hot. Like, it's just it's just a nightmare. And there's this whole section where in the original game you come across this robot arm and you press Y on it and it lifts Aerith up and then she knocks a ladder down. And they're like, hey, what if we turn this into a puzzle? And we did like 10 of them in a row. And you got to move oh. the arms and move Aerith around. Oh, Tim and Rogers talked stuff. about this in his review as and one of the worst parts of the game. What if when you left one of the arms to go to the other arms, it always reset back to its start position? And what if you were like picked up a crate and you need to put the crate down, but Aerith's standing in the way because that's where you dropped her? What if Aerith just didn't move out of the way? What if you had to then go put the crate back down, switch to the other crate, pick Aerith back up, put Aerith in a different spot, switch back to the other crate, pick up the crate, put the crate down, pick Aerith back up, and put her down the crate? What if you had to do that? Wouldn't that be so much fun? Um, that was the worst part of the game so far. Um, highlights. You should just honestly just fuck this game. Just go play the original. Yeah, I know. At this uh, point, but I'm yeah. having fun. That's the problem. Uh, I will say <laughs> highlights. I will say highlights. Fun? Highlights. 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 Magazine at the dentist. Tifa uh, says Cloud has changed. Uh, I wrote, she's a terrorist. What does she have to say? Um. <sighs> Uh, the video game kids, video game kids are awful just across the board. Um, I wrote fast travel after quest is awesome. I think when you finish a short quest and it says, do you want to warp back to the person to turn it in? That's great. 
I love it. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Yep. The only thing that would be better than that is if you could let me say no, break the two boxes next to me, then say yes, because that happened oh, more often yeah. than not. Um, the arm puzzles suck. I wrote that. Cloud came in his pants. Uh, he got a hand massage and he came in his pants. It's very explicit. Is that is it's, that real? Yep. He got a hand massage and he full on ejaculated. Wait. His, they were touching his his, his hands. hand yes he got a hand job buddy uh buddy and he i there was no there's no ambiguity the man and he has pants were on and he just walked Googles. out and then Aerith goes what's wrong cloud and he's like Ugh. and he like goes and leans against the wall she goes are you really okay he's like Ugh. it's just like <laughs> dude just go clean yourself up okay um and then finally <laughs> my final note here uh, the arena announcers in the arena section had lav mics clipped to their shirts, and I thought that was a really cool detail um, to put in that game. That's weird, but yeah, that's my um, that's my so far with Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it's not the worst game I've ever played, and it's not as good as the original. Um, so, you know, I, and my other question was going to be if uh, you guys aren't freaks, so I can't ask this question, but I want to know. Are the modern Final Fantasy games like remake? Um, yeah. it depends. Exactly. <laughs> so, so sixteen. It, it depends. If you're talking about like quest and combat, etc., basically yes, sixteen. Okay. And and fifteen, yes. The ones before that, I think, were relatively different. Okay, because I'd be much more 15, willing to play. Them. Yeah, because basically, fifteen came out. A lot of people like 15. It had some flaws, but people like 15, especially the combat. They kind of adapted that combat for for remake. And then 16 came out. 16 is more of the open world rem of combat as well. So, yeah. Yeah, they are. I would okay. I would probably say go. I would do 16 more than 15 because 15. I played like 10, 15 hours of 15 and. I still couldn't quite get the combat. The story was interesting, but. This is going to sound cool. But then I need a moment to explain it. It's basically like you and your like three best friends and you're just going on a road trip through the countryside and like stopping and camping and then going to different things. But the problem is it's kind of it's it's a basically an empty map. <laughs> so you like <laughs> drive to a location. And what I mean by drive is you either control the shitty handling slow car or you say you drive and then you're just stuck in the back of the car as you're slowly driving along. And then it takes you to a location and they're like, and you talk to three people and then they're like, oh, hey, fetch quest, other side of the map. And then you're just back in the car again, going to the other side of the map for 10 minutes. So like the in-between suck, but the combat's good and the main story's good. So I would go with 16. I think a lot of people really like 16. Yeah, I want to try a, a different one. I mean, eventually, the like of the Final Fantasies on my like list. Eventually, is uh, six, uh, seven was on there, and then eight, nine, and ten. Eight. I've heard good things about. Good things about yeah, ten eight, and nine, ten, two. ten. Ten two. Yep. Yeah. So like those are on the like tentative list. I did put together a big. Uh, YouTube kept recommending me this. I I would shout them out because they were genuinely good videos. But I, I don't remember the name, uh, but they were like eight cozy JRPGs, eight JRPGs under 20 hours. And they weren't like BuzzFeed things. This was like guy researched it and he was like, well, some of these aren't exactly 20 hours, but and it was like very well done. And so I wrote down a bunch that were there. Most of them were like early PlayStation uh, yeah. and, and stuff like that. So I think it's gaming productions. Yes. Gaming productions. Right? Yes. Uh, very good videos. Uh, I would definitely check them out if you're into JRPGs because he does retrospectives on certain ones. But that's how I found like uh, I mentioned it last week, uh, Breath of Fire Four, and I actually mm -hmm. ran the intro on my Mister, and it looked awesome. Um, so there's a couple of those that uh, in like Xeno Gears and, and stuff like that that I want to look into uh, when I get to that point. But right now, I mean, I'm enjoying Final Fantasy Seven. Don't think I'm not. Um, but you know what? Battlefront's out next week, so we'll see what happens. Uh, the other game I've been playing is Pokemon Emerald on the uh, Mew Mini one. Plus. That is the Game Boy Advance combo of... They're combos of the previous two, right? So it's Ruby and Sapphire put together. I, I was going to ask you, so that's... And, Pretty sure that's okay. how it works. 
I get so fucking confused with the names. All of them real quick. Because then the other one's gold, silver, and then sapphire's the one putting. Yeah, and because like, I think Rayquaza is in uh, sapphire and ruby. So yeah, it's that yeah. one. So uh, I'm playing Emerald. Uh, you know, it's pretty good on the Mini Mini Plus. It's got a nice fast forward feature, which is great. Uh, and then I've just been. Uh, I got a Torchic, 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 Torchic named Tendi. Uh, and I grabbed a, a dog, a dog, and I named the dog something awful, I think. Uh, and then uh, I forget what I named the low tad. Houndor? Oh, in, the in low tad. It's like Quinceanera or something like that. Because you got I, a sombrero? Yeah. I get so upset that you name your Pokemon, and it's it's not a valid upset, but I still feel it. Dude. Also, I'm sorry, not to go back to Final Fantasy VII. Why the fuck can't I rename my characters? Took away the best part of the video Come game. On. I got They're classic fucking characters. Come Barrett's on. Barrett's name is Randy Newman. <laughs> Barrett's name is Kitchen. Tifa's name, I'm pretty sure, was Pancake. Why can't I name characters? <laughs> it's way better. AI now exists. It's a <laughs> video game, Will. They can AI the names with a voice. Like, just give it to me. Todd, please. To answer your question, uh, Emerald is Generation 3. It is the upper mm -hmm. version yes. of mm -hmm. and, Ruby and Sapphire. It's the Ruber. same gen as Fire Red and Leaf Green. You don't want the downer version of... You want the upper. <laughs> no. Apparently, that's what Bulbapedia calls it. You have the original versions, and then you have the upper, upper versions. Version. You know, it's, I, Which, would, you I know, would have said enhanced. Makes sense. You've got Crystal, or Emerald, Platinum, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, etc. I thought about playing it on the 3DS uh, with those remakes, but I wanted the GB. I wanted to stick on my Mew Mini, so I went the GBA route. Um, it's fun. Pokemon's good. What can I say? And I need some sort of itch to fill that I, because I can't play Fire Emblem Seven. I have to wait to play it weekly, and I don't want to play Fire Emblem Eight and get over what like overstimulated on Fire Emblem. So, so just Pokemon. Uh -huh. Um. That's it. That's it. That's all she wrote. Time to go into the news, and it's a good thing we've got plenty of time for the news. Uh, yeah. Um, honestly, looking at this, there's we could probably <laughs> skip all of this, but I'll just give you... I know you boys need a little bit of time. Rooster Teeth is shutting down after 21 years, and I know both of you are Funhouse fans. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Would you like a little bit of moment yeah, to, I don't, to I, reminisce? I probably haven't watched any like Rooster Teeth or Achievement Hunter or Let's Play since probably... 2012 but yeah funhouse i think they just they were about to have their ninth anniversary or about to have their 10th i'm not sure when they started i think they had their ninth. eight or nine years ago yeah um but yeah that was like probably one of the only youtube channels i kind of regularly tune into week to week um, yeah I, I i stopped watching them for a while i am uh yeah, because they had like a whole big controversy and stuff like that with a guy leaving. Uh, and then I picked them back up maybe a year ago. I started watching old compilations of the demo discs and stuff like that. And then I was like, let me give new content a try. Um, and it's funny, you brought this up, Ian, with the like scared to like dive into the new thing. Um, what did you bring up? I don't even remember what you brought up at the beginning of this thing. But anyways, I have the thing where I like I find the people at a place that I like and I only watch them. Um, like yeah. I did that with Dropout. Like I just like went to the episodes that had people I liked, and then I always fall into the trap of I eventually check out the other episodes and I find out way more people that I like than that. So that's what I was doing. Funhouse. I was like, oh, I only want to watch videos that have james and elise in it from the new stuff and then i discovered like ryan patrick and charlotte everybody's and hilarious stuff. and everybody's hilarious all the time and it's fantastic uh the funhouse side of it at least they did a little stream today saying they'll be around for a little bit longer um it and then as well yeah and they're, and they're not sure what's going to happen after that um and the, i think that they'll definitely probably split off into a new thing and try to do something together i think but I, it's nice that they have a, at least what sounds like they have a little bit of time left to do videos they want to do, live streams they want to do. Um, but it's it definitely sucks. Um, sucks that they shut down. But uh, you know, some well, good I did, things. I did think now. to myself, like, do I 
should I like download my favorite videos in case Warner's like that's what I was thinking nukes the whole channel. Yeah, you probably probably should. Web? Because <laughs> that happened to what Machinima or to it's yeah, happened Machinima. a couple of times with a couple of big bigger like not legacy gaming YouTube channels, but like big channels that were big that then yeah. got bought that then got think, wiped. Wasn't there that one documentary channel that wiped a bunch of stuff? I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. The gaming documentary one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. I did sorry, yeah. I didn't I didn't pick up what you were putting down, Will, but yes, yeah. I I know it, just, it really sucks because when you when you talk about these like how, how many people were at Rooster Teeth wasn't there like four hundred and isn't there yeah. like Rooster Teeth yeah a lot because they had the whole like animation tw- department tw- wasn't there like twenty or thirty at Funhouse like it's it's one of those things where we're a very small outfit but if we did started it's one of those things where if we did start hitting it big. I would be like, hey, we should probably hire somebody to do marketing for us. We mm-hmm. should probably get a full time accountant now that we're doing money and I need to do more than just one taxes a year, you know, mm-hmm. and and you start to expand it. But the problem is when you expand it so much, you have to deliver on that content or you have to find outside sourcing. And then all of a sudden you're being sold to other people. And it, it's like, I don't know if this is what happened with Funhouse, but it happens with other people as well Is the content is just as good or gets better but the actual stakes at the table is smaller for the content creators because they've accidentally built this huge monstrosity that they then have to bow down to other corporate stakeholders to run Mm -hmm. but then that gives them the power to come in and either in the worst case say you guys are doing great but fuck you i don't like you anymore and kill it or Hey, things aren't really landing up anymore. You're only making a hundred thousand dollars a month instead of a million a month. Yeah. And so we're gonna shutter the whole thing rather than try and rewind it back to a four person thing. And that's that's just kind of the shame with this whole YouTube thing is that if you hit it big, you have to grow larger, but it's almost impossible for you to then dial that back when the viewers back, start yeah. to go away. And that sucks, um, man. That's scary. Yeah. In their goodbye thing, James was saying uh, specifically that the 2023 year where they switched to YouTube memberships, like, is what helped them convince, I assume, Warner to let them continue for a little bit longer, which I assume, again, is the end of March, because they probably uh-huh. said all these members paid to have March finish out, you know? Um, so I don't, I don't yeah. think any of them, I mean, it is, it's, it's now the, like I don't think they'd have any problem with a Patreon, but it, the problem is they have to figure out how much they can afford on a Patreon, mm-hmm. um, and 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 everyone's going to be begging for all of them to be there. Where those people, rightly so, have to be realistic. Do I want to work part time at a Patreon or find another full time job? You know, mm-hmm. um, so I mean, uh, it, it sucks. Uh, I'm going to be watching a lot of their content to relive the memories late into the night. Yeah, but. Uh, and it was it's like it's weird because obviously the, this has been happening a lot over the past few years um but there was at least a perception in my mind even not having watched like rooster teeth proper videos in a while but that they were kind they were one of the kind of the like the big first big like internet-y companies that almost had the feeling of being like too big to fail mm-hmm. so it was kind of not surprising yeah. that Warner's finally took the axe to them, but it's like, oh, that's it's kind of like the end of an era because they were kind of like that first big, yeah, the people to break out with like doing it on the internet, not doing it, was it just, on the internet. No, but, but they they were much it, it much was, earlier. <laughs> it's just fucking wild because thinking about it, like I, I was never a big Rooster Teeth fan. But I was a fan when they did Red versus Blue seasons one and two. And I remember Mm -hmm. finding out about Red versus Blue like four episodes in when they were still hosting it on their website. And we would pass it around on like fucking CDs, basically, because thumb drives weren't really viable at that point. And we're like, oh, there's a new episode out. And we would watch it and find it so funny. And then I just disappeared. And then to just hear that this company that made those funny skits is just getting bigger and bigger and they're making an anime and they're making a manga series and all this shit. And it's like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? So you're right. They were just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, um, it just goes, but you can't roll it back. 
the bigger you get the more the more views you got to get to to sustain yeah. it and that's just that's a fucked up system you know yeah i it's it's funny they were huge like i went to rtx one year like they're huge um and like yeah this is huge to have a convention so um yeah absolutely wild uh sucks i hope all those people find success elsewhere um is that yeah. all we want to hit here uh that's I, so the problem is we've got news that's probably worth diving into but they're all equal but honestly it's getting late you guys have seen it i don't think we're gonna add anything special with our commentary let's get out of here let's get out of here uh, i'll just hit the wish list spotlight real quick uh wish list spotlight for this week is old school rally uh i picked this one because i thought it looked like a game ian would like uh this is a nostalgic racing game I that combines the charm of like classic retro it? style visuals with the thrill of international rally competitions uh it is uh coming out 2024 frozen lake games you're basically a rally driver it looks like it was made on the playstation one uh or maybe playstation two ish I'm trying to read those those tree boxes look very like ps1 n64 um there's also uh all sorts of goodies in here uh it looks like a fun you know i love i feel like a lot of people have been making rally games where it's like the top down above and i hate controlling those because i'm bad at video games and so this looks like a regular racing game uh i just want someone to put the trueno in here uh and have like a good tokyo downhill map and i'll be yeah uh, this is this is a straight call back to colin mccray's rally Colin you remember that series yeah, yeah. Who's, Mar- whose rally is it anyway <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> turns don't matter that's good um that's a wish list spotlight for this week old school rally go check it out uh wish list them on uh steam so they can get pumped up get those rookie numbers pumped up uh it's gonna be great um that's gonna do it for the show oh i remembered ian this is what i was gonna say did you try the wheel with expeditions mud runner no actually i it doesn't really make sense using the wheel because it's a very slow speed game. It's a lot of like back up, go forward, tweak the wheel a little bit. And so I just played on controller. You don't need to. You, you don't about need doing to. That it's snow. a puzzle. Game. It's not a driving game. It's, it's a puzzle. It's, game. Honestly, it's not a driving game. It's, it's a puzzle game. It's like, like a platformer. Game I play. It's like a driving platformer. It's like yeah. a driving platformer. It's it's like driving co-op in a way, actually, because you have to do a lot of wiggling. Yeah, what's wrong with you? You're a maniac okay Thanks. um folks we're gonna get the hell out of here uh, i'm gonna hit this button do you think i can plug everything in uh, 60 seconds Probably. let's find Do out it. let's find out i'll plug myself tell you that much uh folks snow runners this weekend uh co-op this weekend 10 a.m on sunday i think is when we're doing that you know i took that out of the dock because now that it's co-op we can't all know what the time is yet but okay thank you. well it's gonna be a time so check out to our socials and our uh our uh, thing discord whatever fuck you uh new video building an antagonist came out this week from jake it's excellent if you like lego racers and it's excellent if you don't like lego 2k drive so go check it out uh that was great also don't forget kyle's video came out a while ago about lord of the rings and how it is amazing uh so check that out the ea games uh and then next week we've got fired emblem and of, on tuesday and of course uh on local chat next thursday uh, I've been your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week, Jake and Ian. Kyle's in the chat. Hi, Kyle. Hope you have a wonderful night. Hope everyone has a wonderful night. We'll see you all next week. Bye.